Hi, I'm Megan and welcome to my kitchen. In today's What's for Dinner video, I'll be sharing with you what meals we had this past week. Now, the first few meals that I've got for you are us eating out. We were out of town visiting my grandfather. And then after that, I'll show you our meals at home. They were easy to make, budget friendly and delicious. So if you're looking for some weeknight meal ideas for your family, just keep watching. First up, we went to a place in my hometown called Betty's Country Cooking. Now, this is not a fancy place at all. It's just good southern comfort food. This has been open, I think, since the 80s. And um, my family's went ever since. My granny used to take us when we were small. But uh, Miss Betty passed away a few years ago. And my mom and I went once after she passed uh, when the new owners took over. And it just wasn't that great. And so we haven't been back, but I have been craving it. And so we decided to give it a try. So glad that we did. It was back to the you know way that it used to be, the same recipes and everything. Now they have a menu, but they also have what they call a hot bar where they rotate different uh, proteins and vegetables. So I chose the hot bar. Here is a picture of my plate. All right, so I had a roll turkey and dressing with gravy, a piece of fried pork tenderloin, some mashed potatoes and green beans, and they make their mashed potatoes there every day. Um, I know a lot of restaurants will use like instant potatoes. They make there, so it's delicious. And then I also got some macaroni and cheese, which they're macaroni and cheese. I don't know how they make it, but it is the bomb.com. It's so good. And then I got uh, sweet potatoes with the marshmallow topping. Absolutely delicious. And then my husband ordered their double bacon cheeseburger and onion rings and I hadn't had either of those things here before as many times as I went their onion rings were the best I've ever had seriously I think Sonics are the best well I used to think that theirs were better than Sonics they were delicious and their hamburger oh my gosh it was amazing it was juicy when you took a bite there was like juice running down and they have like real thick bacon it's just so so good and that's the thing with food you know sometimes just simple things but done really well make all the difference and so that's what i liked about this just simple food but cooked and seasoned really well this was delicious For dinner the next night, we picked up Cookout and took it back to the Airbnb. Now, if you're not familiar with Cookout, it's a chain restaurant, it's fast food. Um, I've never been there before until now, but uh, my parents and my husband had, and they said it's not the best food in the world. I mean, it's kind of your standard fast food place, uh, but it's pretty reasonably priced, and they have a wide selection of stuff, and I've been wanting to try it. We don't have one near us, but one had opened up in my hometown, and like I said, I've been wanting to try it. So I did, I think it's called like their junior tray or something like that and basically they have like different categories of things and you can choose one of each category from a list of things and so I got two corn dogs some chicken nuggets and then I decided to try one of their walking tacos I can't remember exactly how much this was for the two corn dogs the walking taco the chicken nuggets and then I got a, a drink but I think it was like five dollars or something so not bad and then we weren't super hungry this day so I grabbed my husband just two of their chicken bacon ranch wraps and then he ate one of my corn dogs uh, because I got full but um, it wasn't bad at all pretty tasty the walking taco was pretty good I would get that again it was it was pretty yummy but that was our dinner this night. So for our last night in Kentucky, my husband really wanted pizza and wings, um, but it's a really small town. And on Sunday night, like no, uh, the only place in town that was still open that served pizza was Pizza Hut and their Pizza Hut is awful. It's terrible. <laughs> so we went to a nearby town. It was only about 10, 15 minutes away. We ate at a place called, I think it was called like Wings Pizza and Things, something like that. So we started out with some chicken wings. We got their buffalo and their barbecue. Might not look like much. These wings were amazing. They were so delicious. So, so good. And then for my entree, I got their uh, chicken quesadilla. I added bacon and ranch to that and then it came with like chips and salsa and then for my husband he got one of their small he calls it a garbage pizza basically has a little bit of everything on it he said the pizza was okay it wasn't the best that he ever had but it was pretty decent uh, but it was a good meal and I like my quesadilla and like I said those wings were delicious For dinner the next night, we had traveled back home that day. I wanted something kind of quick and easy to put together for dinner, and I didn't have a whole lot of meat thawed, so I decided to do breakfast for dinner. Here's what I'm going to use. 
I've got some bacon. I'm going to cook this up in the oven and then I'm going to make some scrambled eggs. I'm just going to use some eggs, some Tony Satchery's pepper, and then I happen to have a little half and half. Normally I just use milk. I'm going to whisk those up and cook those in a little bit of butter um, on top of the stove. And then I decided to make some biscuits. I have this Southern Biscuit Mix. I found out about this from Tammy on Collard Valley Cooks. I've had this before. It is delicious. They taste like homemade biscuits. And all you need is some buttermilk with that little biscuit mix. If you can find this, definitely buy it. I highly recommend it. And then I have these frozen, frozen Vagadoc hash brown sticks that I got from Aldi. I'm going to cook those up in the air fryer. Here's a picture of our plate. So we have the hash brown sticks, the bacon, a couple of the biscuits. I did um, one half of the biscuit with some strawberry jelly and butter, and then the other half has some regular butter and then pumpkin butter. And then we've got our scrambled eggs. My husband likes cheese on his, so I added a little cheese for his eggs. And then I just cut up some oranges, and that was our dinner this night. Everything was so good. Those hash brown sticks from Aldi are pretty tasty. Those biscuits, like I said, if you can find that particular mix, I highly recommend it. They're delicious. For dinner the next night, I made garlic butter steak bites. I had a couple of strip steaks in my freezer that I wanted to use up. So here I have those strip steaks. I just trimmed them and then cut them into cubes. You can season them however you'd like. I'm going to use some kosher salt, some of the Kinder's buttery steakhouse seasoning, and the Kinder's steak blend seasoning. For one of my sides, I have these microwavable sweet potatoes, so I'm going to cook those according to the package instructions. And to top it, I have some of this Lando Lake cinnamon sugar butter. I hadn't used this on a sweet potato before, but I decided to give it a try and highly recommend. Delicious. I also use just a little touch of brown sugar as well. I've mentioned homemade ranch dressing so many times before my channel and I have quite a few people on a regular basis that will reach out to me and ask me for my recipe and I apologize. When I say homemade, that's kind of misleading. It's really semi-homemade, but here's how I make it. All I do is get the Hidden Valley uh, Dry Ranch Dressing Mix. You could use whatever brand you prefer and I just follow the instructions on the back. So for a half batch, which is what I'm making tonight, you just use a tablespoon and a half of the ranch dressing mix, a half a cup of mayonnaise, and a half a cup of milk. For the milk, you can use buttermilk, you could use just regular cow's milk. Um, I've also used almond milk in the past. So all I'm going to do is combine that and whisk it and then place it into the refrigerator for 30 minutes. Um, you really want to give it, you know, at least 15 minutes, if not 30, before you eat it. It allows the dried herbs to soften, it allows the flavors to come together, and it will thicken up a little bit for you. So if you um, would like to give this a try, I recommend it. There's nothing wrong with bottled ranch dressing at all but using these packets it's it's just delicious so if you've never tried it i recommend you give it a try my sweet potatoes are cooking i've got the ranch dressing made for the side salad so i'm going to start on the steak bites they take hardly no time at all in this skillet i've got it over about medium high heat have a little bit of oil and butter heating up once it's hot, I'm going to add in my steak cubes. Now you may need to do this in batches uh, because you want to give it a chance to get a good sear on it. You're just gonna cook these for maybe a minute and a half or two minutes on um, each side, turning them pretty often. And once they are done to your liking, or just a little bit shy, I would say, go ahead and pull them out. And then I'm going to turn the heat down, give it a second to cool down. I did wipe out my skillet. I'm going to add in a couple tablespoons of butter and then some minced garlic and just cook that for about 30 seconds or so. And then I'm going to add my steak and the juices back in, stir it, and then just, you know, toss it and cook it for maybe 30 seconds, maybe another minute on the high side. And that's it. So I'm going to remove those. I did sprinkle it with just a little bit of parsley flakes for color. And next I'll show you our plate. We've got the steak bites, the sweet potato with that cinnamon sugar butter and a little pinch of brown sugar. And then for the side salads, I used lettuce, tomato, cucumber, shredded cheese, some bacon crumbles from Sam's Club, croutons, and then I know this might sound weird, I know, um, but I added some purple grapes. Now, again, might sound a little bit weird, but there is a steakhouse in Lebanon, Tennessee. It's called Cherokee Steakhouse. It's out on the lake. It's gorgeous out there, and it's right next to, well, it used to be Reuben McIntyre's estate. She sold it a couple years ago, um, but it's just beautiful out there, and their steakhouse adds 
purple grapes to their salads. And the first time I tried it or saw this, the grapes on the salad, I was like, what is this? But it's delicious. It adds just a tiny little bit of sweetness. So that was our dinner this night. Delicious. So yummy. For dinner the next night, I made white chicken enchiladas. This is the plain chickens recipe. I'll have it linked down below. I have made this many times, but it's been a little while since I made them. And I had some shredded cooked chicken in my freezer that I wanted to use up, so I decided to make these. I've got my oven preheating to 350 degrees. In this bowl, I'm going to add in that uh, cooked chicken. You could also use rotisserie chicken or leftover chicken. And then we're going to add some Monterey Jack cheese. Normally, I like to buy blocks and shred it myself, but I couldn't find any of the Monterey Jack cheese. Um, cheese at Walmart, so I just got the pre-shredded. It's fine. And then the recipe does not call for this, but I decided to add some taco seasoning. When I've made these, I've always felt like the sauce had good flavor, but that the filling itself didn't have a lot of flavor, so I added some taco seasoning. Delicious. I absolutely will do that again, and if you make this recipe, which I recommend this recipe, add some taco seasoning to it. So I'm just going to take the chicken and cheese mixture, add it to my tortillas, roll them up, and then place them in a grease casserole dish. Set that to the side while we make the sauce. To my saucepan, I'm going to add in the butter and allow that to melt. Once it's melted, I'm going to add in my flour, whisk it, and allow it to cook for about 30 seconds or a minute. Next, I'm going to add in my chicken broth and I'm gonna add it slowly and add it while I'm whisking and then allow that to thicken up. It just takes a couple minutes. Once it's slightly thickened, I'm going to remove it from the heat. Make sure you turn off your stove. I'm going to add in my sour cream. And in the past, I have um, cut the sour cream with um, nonfat Greek yogurt. It turns out just fine. I'm going to add in my drained diced green chilies. And just in case you're wondering, I don't find this spicy at all. I mean, it does have a little bit of heat from the green chilies, but it, it's really not spicy. So once I've got that combined, I'm going to pour the sauce over my enchiladas and then sprinkle on some Monterey Jack cheese. I had a little bit of mozzarella cheese here in a different bag. I wasn't sure if I had enough Monterey Jack cheese but I did. I'm going to place this into my preheated oven and bake these for about 25 to 30 minutes till it's bubbly and then I like to broil it for a minute or two just so it gets a little golden brown on top. This is what it looks like when it's done and I am going to allow it to cool for about five minutes before we serve it. Now to go along with this, a lot of times I'll do Spanish rice and refried beans, but I had some fresh broccoli in my fridge that really needed to be used up. So I'm just gonna make some quick steamed broccoli. Here's how I like to make it. I take my broccoli, wash it of course, cut it into florets. I'm gonna add it to a microwavable bowl. And then I add just a few tablespoons of water. I'm going to cover the bowl with some plastic wrap and I like to just poke a few holes in it. And then I'm gonna place this into the microwave. Now, really how long this takes to cook depends on how much broccoli you're using. For this amount here, which is basically like a crown and a half, I cooked it for five minutes. I would recommend you cooking it for about five to six minutes, checking on it. If you feel like it needs a couple more minutes, then you can add that, of course. So once it's done, I'm going to remove it from the microwave, carefully take off the plastic wrap. There's a lot of steam there. If there's any excess water, I drain that off. And then I like to add in just a tiny pat of butter, some salt and pepper. And then tonight I decided to use some of the Kinder's Buttery Steakhouse seasoning. I also really like to use the Mrs. Dash, um, what is it? The garlic and herb seasoning on steamed broccoli. It's delicious. I'm going to give that a stir and then that's it. The side is done. Here are the plates, so we've got the broccoli. And then for the enchiladas, really you can eat them as is. You can garnish them however you'd like. I like to garnish with a little bit of chopped green onion. And then I normally add a little extra sour cream to my husband's. Today I had some of the Cacique cilantro lime sour cream, so that's what I use for his. This dinner was so yummy. Finally, I had a pork butt in my freezer that I wanted to use up. I got it a few months ago on sale at Kroger. I thawed it in the fridge. I'm going to add it to my crock pot. Now, I've shared how I make my pulled pork before on my channel, but I wanted to share it again. Make it the way that my dad taught me, and it is delicious. Now, to season it, use whatever seasonings you prefer. I made it this way for the 9-11 service project last month, and I took a sample bite of it and thought it was delicious. So, I wanted to try it for my husband and I. I'm just using the Kinder's barbecue seasoning and the brown sugar 
sugar garlic. So I'm going to season all sides of the pork butt and then to the bottom of the crock pot, I am going to add a little bit of root beer. You don't have to do this. You could also um, use Coke, Dr. Pepper, some broth or just plain water. But my dad uses the root beer and it gives it a really good flavor. Now I'm also gonna add a couple drops of liquid smoke. Go easy with this, a little bit goes a long way. I'm gonna cover this with a lid and cook this on low for about eight hours. Here's what it looked like when it was done. It was so tender, it just fell right apart. Now I'm draining most of the liquid off. I did leave it just a little bit. And a quick note, my pork shoulder was about three pounds. If you're using a large pork butt, I would suggest you cutting it into smaller pieces. Um, otherwise, it's gonna take you quite a bit longer for it to cook, for it to get really good and tender. So once I shredded it, I added it back to the crock pot, and then you can serve it just like that and allow people to add barbecue sauce themselves. Um, but for just my husband and I, we both like barbecue sauce with it. So I added some of the Sweet Baby Ray's and stirred it up and then I covered it with the lid um, until the rest of dinner was ready. For one of my sides, I decided to make some collard greens. Now I have not made collard greens in years and years and years. I helped my granny make them a couple times when I was a little girl, but haven't made them since then. And when I helped her, I didn't eat them. So this was definitely an experiment and I messed up on a couple things. So <laughs> first, as you can see here, I don't know what I was thinking. This pot was way too small. I had collards everywhere. So I had to switch to a bigger pot. And second of all, I don't know what I was thinking. For just the two of us, Gary and I, I did not need two pounds of collard greens. I had collards for days and days and days. Now I know you can buy collard greens um, and wash them and shred them yourself but I just spent a couple extra dollars and bought the pre-shredded pre-washed. Once I've got these to the pot I'm going to add some chicken broth and water and then for the seasoning when I make pinto beans and stuff like that I normally like to use ham hocks. I couldn't find any at Walmart this day so I just got some uh, smoked turkey necks. Uh, you could use bacon whatever pork fat you like or you could just leave out um, you know the, the pork or turkey or whatever all together and make them vegetarian. For seasonings, use whatever seasonings you like and season it to your taste. I decided to add a little bit of brown sugar, salt, pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, Tony Saturies, some minced garlic, and chicken bouillon. Once I got that seasoned, I gave them a stir, brought them to a boil, reduced it to a simmer, and we like ours pretty tender, so I simmered them for a couple hours. Now, several of the recipes that I saw for this said to use vinegar. I'm not a big vinegar fan, and my husband likes to add this Texas peat, um, like pepper vinegar sauce, so I skipped out on the vinegar. For my other side, I've been craving homemade mac and cheese, so that's what I'm gonna make. It's so easy and super delicious. In this pot, I am going to add in some butter and then allow that to melt. Once it's melted, I'm going to sprinkle over my flour, give that a whisk, and allow that to cook for about a minute. Next, I'm gonna add in my liquid. Now, normally I just use straight milk, but I had like a quarter cup of cream, about a half a cup of half and half in my fridge that I wanted to use up. So I've added that to this measuring cup and then topped off the rest with just regular milk. And I do like to let this sit out if I can think about it. I like to let it sit out like while I've got the pasta boiling, which side note, I boiled up some elbow macaroni noodles um, off camera and drain those. Just cook them according to package directions and some salted water. Now, normally I don't add a whole lot of seasonings to my macaroni and cheese, but I've seen several recipes lately on Instagram. And so I decided to add some and absolutely, I will definitely be doing that again. I didn't measure, just season to taste, add whatever you like. Added some salt, pepper, smoked paprika, some garlic powder and a little uh, dry mustard. For the cheeses, you can do whatever you prefer or what you've got on hand. Tonight, I'm doing some grated Parmesan along with some shredded sharp cheddar and mozzarella. I'm going to add that and give it a whisk, and then that's it. You'll want to give this a taste and adjust the seasonings to your taste, and look at how cheesy and creamy this is. So I'm going to add in my cooked pasta. Give that a stir. Now, you can eat this as is, but I am going to bake it. So I poured it into a grease casserole dish. 
I'm going to add a little extra of the shredded mozzarella and cheddar on top. And then uh, you don't have to do this, but I'm gonna add just a little sprinkle of paprika just for some color. This is going to go into the preheated oven at 350 degrees and bake for about 30 minutes. This is what it looks like once it came out of the oven. It is bubbly and cheesy. Here's a finished uh, picture of my plate. So I've got the pulled pork, the bun, some extra barbecue sauce, the mac and cheese and greens, and this dinner was so incredibly delicious. All right, that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, hit the thumbs up button below and subscribe to my channel if you're not already and have a great rest of the day. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.